January 1989. I, George Herbert Walker Bush, do solemnly swear. George Bush is sworn in as the 41st President of the United States. And will, to the best of my ability, he takes a solemn oath to the American people to uphold the Constitution. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Eleven years later, his son, George W. Bush, hopes to follow in his father's footsteps. But few Americans realize that both father and son have already taken an oath to a mysterious and powerful secret society known as Skull and Bones. It happened while each was a student at prestigious Yale University. The society was actually founded on the Yale campus in the year 1832 by a General Russell who modeled it upon German lodges of Freemasonry that used a lot of death's head imagery, skulls, skeletons, coffins, that sort of thing. Ron Rosenbaum, a journalist whose work has appeared in the New York Times, has spent several years investigating Skull and Bones and its powerful members. Skull and Bones is designed, I think, as a bonding ritual for initially for the old money old-fashioned blue-blood Eastern establishment. In addition to both President Bush and his son, other distinguished members, or Bonesmen as they're called, include Senator John Kerry of Massachusetts and conservative spokesman William F. Buckley Jr. Each year, 15 new members are selected from the junior class in a ceremony known as Tap Night. Prospective members receive a tap on the shoulder from a Bonesman. For these chosen few, this exclusive invitation means they are destined for greatness. These 15 people are going to be part of an elite, not just an elite on the Yale campus, but an elite of American destiny. People who will guide the nation, people who consciously see themselves as having a mission to be America's leaders. The new members are led to this forbidding and windowless structure on the Yale campus, known as the tomb and it's the secret meeting place of skull and bones there are all sorts of legends about what goes on on that April night when the skull and bones members are tapped and are first brought to the tomb exactly what happens behind these padlocked doors rumors include everything from bizarre sexual practices to grave robbing Part of the reason for the secrecy, I think, is uh, it creates a mystique, inwardly and outwardly. It encourages the members of Skull and Bones to believe that they're so special, and that what goes on in the tomb is so highly fraught with, with deep meaning that it can't be uttered to the outside world. Senator Kerry and Mr. Buckley politely declined our written request to speak with them about their membership in Skull and Bones. Mr. Bush also refused to comment. But we tracked down a bonesman named Julio Gonzalez, who is now an alderman in New Haven, Connecticut. I'm looking for you to give us some, maybe just one or two little secrets from Skull and Bones. Well, I really appreciated my time in the organization. I think I'm not going to discuss it today, so I don't have any comments on Students on campus are also in the dark when it comes to Skull and Bones, including this man who says he managed to sneak inside the courtyard of the Bonesman tomb. I climbed in, I saw their yard, I saw their uh, sort of, they have a sort of bird bath and they have two skeletons looking at each other like this and holding a skull in between them. Uh, I don't know what any of it means. Another student who has also been inside the courtyard was able to quickly shoot these never-before-seen photographs, including a shot of the mysterious fountain. He agreed to talk to us, but only if we kept his identity secret. I don't want to get on these people's bad side. I mean, these are some of the most powerful people on the planet. The daring student was surprised by what he saw inside the fountain. There was actually some sort of red residue in the fountain, which I imagined to be blood. But I have a feeling they do some strange rituals in, with the fountain. These two skeletons look like they're hushing people in some way. Another of his photos shows a cryptic wheel of destiny. It had a spinning device on it. And I imagine what happens is during their rituals, 
they spin it and it says, you know, destiny and fate and all those things have a huge part of what goes on in that place. Because I think they all feel like they're destined to be rulers of the world. According to Nick Fleischer, co-editor-in-chief of the campus tabloid Rumpus, Skull and Bones is so protective of its image that when the magazine tried to run a story about it, their efforts were mysteriously sabotaged. When we published that issue, a bunch of the issues that we distributed went missing. You know, shortly after we distributed them. And we, we found them after a couple days, but I mean, it was... Yeah, I mean, we never had any hard evidence, but we sort of had an idea of what had happened to him. What dark secrets are Skull and Bones hiding? According to Ron Rosenbaum's new book, the Bonesmen practice a number of bizarre rituals, including one known as the Sexual Confessional. And it happens every Sunday night, and they all gather, and one by one, one per week, they share uh, the secrets of their sexual life. It's a kind of sex education thing for the ruling class kids to initiate them into a more sophisticated knowledge of sexuality so they wouldn't be taken advantage of by, say, working class girls or girls from the wrong class or gold diggers or fortune hunters. Another secret of the Bonesmen is their mysterious fascination with the numbers three, two, two. The legend of the origins of Skull and Bones is that it was founded by a Greek orator, Demosthenes, in the year 322 B.C. So 322 becomes the Skull and Bones secret number. I don't think anyone believes that the Skull and Bones actually started in 322 B.C., but mythically they date themselves back to that. So 322 is important to them. But there's an even more bizarre twist to the Bonesman's secret number. Right inside the door, that big door to the tomb of Skull and Bones, is a room whose walls are covered with license plates. Recently, an informant, someone, a woman, who was taken inside the tomb of Skull and Bones by an initiate who broke his oath, told me what she says is the secret of the license plates, that this, every Skull and Bones member is told that when he sees a license plate that has the numbers 322 on it, he's supposed to confiscate them. That was her word, confiscate them. Rosenbaum says his informant revealed an even darker secret, grave robbing. But every class of Skull and Bones, every group of 15, is given the name of some famous person and told to dig up the skull of that person and bring it to the tomb of Skull and Bones. Rosenbaum believes that the Bush family may have been involved in one of the most notorious cases of grave robbing. And one of my informants told me that, and this has been reported elsewhere as well, that one of the skulls in a glass aquarium-like case filled with turquoise chips is labeled the skull of Geronimo, the Apache warrior. Because as it turns out, um, Prescott Bush, President George Bush's father, was stationed somewhere in Arizona near the burial ground of Geronimo at a time when the skull may have disappeared. According to Rosenbaum, members of the Bush family even tried to return the skull. As I understand it, the Apaches turned it down because they said, we don't think this is the right skull. Despite the disturbing rumors, there are many who believe that Skull and Bones is just a harmless college fraternity. The only reason why Skull and Bones remains interesting is because they guard their secrecy. But one thing is clear. The power of Skull and Bones extends far beyond the ancient walls of its secret tomb. I think what makes Skull and Bones significant, not just as some, you know, extra special fraternity or something like that, is that over the years, Skull and Bones people have been secretaries of state, they've been presidents, they've been in the foreign policy establishment, they've been in the cabinet, they've been on the Supreme Court. These are the people who have shaped America's character. And what's interesting is they've had their character shaped inside the tomb of Skull and Bones.